And we have just come off of a weekend with an enormous amount of both visual and performing arts all under the executive director of Fusion Fest, Tally Sukasawa. Hello, Tally. Hello. So um, this weekend we had Fusion Fest and there were, what, a thousand participants as well as how many, maybe 15,000 or more um, audience members? Yeah, we had close to 20,000 people coming to enjoy all the different arts and foods and see all the different cultures that we have here in Central Florida. It was really, it was a wild weekend. <laughs> yeah. It was great. It was wild. There was just so much to experience. Someone said that it was even like a sensory overload because everywhere they looked, there was something new, um, something to explore, something to learn about, something, yeah. So, yeah. Well, there were three stages, an art gallery, um, processions, food, merchandise. Giant theme. puppets that were built by our amazing community. Yes. So what's our, what are a couple of highlights for you personally? Well, um, I, I, I can't have only one. I think I have about four or five. So this is the fifth year of Fusion Fest. And I think what really, what I really loved were the new things that we added. So of course, number one is the citizenship ceremony that was very touching about, I think 19 immigrants became US citizens at Fusion Fest on Saturday morning. And that was a very, very emotional time, but also very celebratory time. And, you know, as Americans or <laughs> Americans who have been here a long time or um, who were born here, were welcoming these new Americans. That was very and, touching. And it, they were welcomed in such style with that fanfare by Keith Lay yes. with the, the brass band and the choir and the African drummers and the train horns on the rooftops. Um, that is correct. That, that was definitely uh, a very emotional time. Yeah, I can tell you were there. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. And so I think like the beginning, the kickoff and the finale were incredible. The finale was with uh, a production by Cece Tenio. She did this show, signature show called Kaleidoscope, The Wonders of Creative Collaboration. And that united about 15, if I'm not mistaken, groups and artists of multiple skills to put together. And, and she put together this show in collaboration with all these artists of different cultures um, that was an explosion of feelings and emotions and sights and sounds and visuals and everything, really. Um, I felt like I was, oh, um, so sorry about that. I really felt like I was navigating all the emotions and it was amazing, it was so beautiful. So Citizenship Ceremony, Kaleidoscope, produced by CC Tineo. Um, I have to say that the games and the art projects were really impressive. We had those before. But, you know, the last two years have been under a pandemic. So I don't think that in the last two years we were able to fulfill those areas potential. But this year they were full all the time. Uh, kids were waiting to sign up for workshops. There were two hours from that time. Uh, they were playing with the games. We had about, I think, maybe 30 games available for kids to play, but not only to play, they also learn where the game was coming from, where the game came from. So that was really cool to see kids learning about other cultures and experiencing it, right? Not only visually, but also being very hands-on with, with everything. And of course, just to close out on the kids and family stuff, the Cardboard Village of the World was amazing too. I, I loved seeing the kids going through, but also the adults trying to go through, running around them, getting stuck sometimes. That was, that was, that, that, that it was very joyful. And trying to figure out which building that, wait, I think that's the Sydney Opera House. That's the Arc de Triomphe. Yeah. Is, is that the Taj Mahal? I think it is. 
Yeah. That looks yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. foolish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, so many highlights in the, oh, of course, um, the cosplay meetup and contest that happened uh, at the Allen stage, at the Bob Allen Family Foundation stage, in con kind of in conjunction with our spoken word program and the fashion show was also such an amazing addition to that stage. So, uh, yeah, it was really incredible to be able to get that community out of their big silo because the cosplay community is a big it's a big one and and get some of them to come and celebrate with us uh, i learned that the joker who was one of our mcs for the cosplay that it actually has also puerto rican roots i'm like oh i did not know that so i think we all learn something new about a different culture or even about our own culture well and speaking of communities the the country meetups where uh, some groups like had musicians there, uh, you know, the idea was to just gather and meet people and take a picture of, of the crowd of people that had that heritage or were connected yeah. to it in some way, had visited or whatever. Um, yeah. That those was were really celebrations on their own. Yeah, that was really fun too at the entrance of the festival and having groups every hour or half an hour or so uh, meeting and getting, you know, to, get to know new people of their culture because sometimes we think oh you know all the i don't know all the japanese people already know each other but that that's not true so it was a great moment for people to celebrate being together and also making new friends and getting that picture all together that's a great memory now i have to say there were only there's only one person besides me at the alaska meetup i mean we're a pretty small one so um oh, no so yeah, yeah. I think next year we should definitely add Ohio to that list. It's not only a country meetup. I think we ended up calling country meetup, but it should be more than just a country meetup. It should be um, everyone's meetup, a state and an affinity group, and also a country and a culture, maybe a religion too. You know, we just keep adding and growing. So uh, I can't wait to see what we do next year. Maybe it's just called Meetup Station. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, uh, what's next for Fusion Fest in the arts? Uh, we have we have a lot of plans right now. I am personally full in post production mode, but of course we are receiving. And throughout the year, we as we go through things, we're already talking about okay, what can we do next year? I don't think we can pull this off this year, mm -hmm. but maybe next year we can do this. Um, for don't Fusion, you have, Fest, don't you have an event coming up like next week? We do. Yeah. Do you want to talk about it? No, I don't think I'll even be able to be there. I'm going to be out of town. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah. Uh, so December 7, we do have uh, a small event. It is a very intimate event for about 40, 50 people. It is a new visual arts program and it's called Multicolors and Cultures. And it's in partnership with the Transnational American, oops, Got that wrong. American Transnational Advisors, who was our sponsor, uh, was a sponsor of the art gallery at the festival. So we're partnering with them and using their beautiful location, which is a penthouse over Lake Eola, overseeing Lake Eola. And we're curating art of local and international oh. artists for that location that serves as an office space and also as a as an event space. So we are Having this opening reception, it's going to be our first event there and our first exhibition uh, next Wednesday, uh, December 9. We just posted on Facebook the details about the event. There are very limited tickets, and we already invited some of the artists that are involved and are some of um, some some of our steering committee members and board members. So be quick and see if you want to get those tickets because it's very limited. Is um, this a new ongoing program for Fusion Fest? It is. It's going to be a bi-monthly exhibition. So every other month there will be a new exhibition at American Transnational Advisors, this uh, penthouse on Lake Eola. So I'm really excited to be activating more. As you know, we already have our monthly dining events that happen from January to October, our bi-weekly Diverse Orange talk show, our monthly migration films, and now adding this bi-monthly 
um, digital arts program that I I'm very, very uh, excited for it and to be connecting even more with local artists and highlighting their works. Well, I think you've got all the art forms covered pretty much. Um, yeah, I am ho I am hoping to bring some theater to the festival mm -hmm. next year. I think we're in, we haven't tapped into that much. We had a theater um, performance last year, but I think we we can we're gonna do some research and see if we can pull it off. Again, there's just so many things happening at the festival. We really we we, we need to be really careful whenever adding a new thing so it gets proper attention because it is big and so many things happening at the same time. Well, it's great to talk to you, Tally. Um, Fusion Fest has added a lot of arts and culture to Central Florida and a lot of diversity in our arts and culture. Yeah. So thank you very much. And thank you all for watching this edition of Playfully Orange. Thank you.